Lately, I've been reading what the experts are saying about the climate crisis, and it's frightening stuff. It's time to get serious. We can't keep ignoring the warnings. The picture is terrifying. According to top climate scientist James Hansen, we have only 10 years to act decisively and avert catastrophe. Australia's chief climate scientist says the world has only five years to avoid disastrous warming. And a senior Australian government climate advisor says Adelaide could be out of water as soon as the end of next year. NASA climate experts have predicted the Arctic Ocean could be ice-free within six years and the snows on Mount Kilimanjaro will be gone within 10 years. The U.S. Secretary of State says we only have 10 years before climate change will be catastrophic and irreversible, and a threat to human security, global stability, and American national security. The United Nations Environment Program predicts there will be 50 million climate refugees within two years. 1930s-style Dust Bowl conditions will devastate Canadian and U.S. wheat-growing regions. The Maldives will be completely underwater within 30 years. And within the next 11 years, entire nations could be wiped off the face of the Earth by rising sea levels, if global warming isn't reversed. Granted, it's not all doom and gloom. That same UN report also says warming could raise agricultural output in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union? When was this written? June 29th, 1989. These warnings that entire nations were gonna be wiped off the map and Canada's prairies would be destroyed by drought within 11 years were made 31 years ago? You know, last time I flew over them, the prairies were still there. And as we pointed out in our video on failed Canadian government climate predictions, wheat production has actually soared over the past two decades. Also, as we've reported in our newsletters, countries are not being wiped off the map by rising sea levels. In fact, small Pacific islands like the Maldives are holding up just fine. So, maybe we should check when all those other scary predictions were made. And fortunately, it's easy to do thanks to a website, extinctionclock.org. According to top climate scientist James Hansen, we have only 10 years to act decisively and avert catastrophe. That was September 14th, 2006. So we had until 2016, which was four years ago. Was there a climate catastrophe and I missed it? Australia's chief climate scientist says the world has only five years to avoid disastrous warming. December 4th, 2009. We had only five years left, 11 years ago. And a senior Australian government climate advisor says Adelaide could be out of water as soon as the end of next year. As Gertrude Stein might say, interesting if true. That prediction was made back in 2008, so next year would have been 2009. Still waiting on that one. The taps in Adelaide are still working. NASA climate experts have predicted the Arctic Ocean could be ice-free within six years. But that one is from December 12, 2007, and the forecast was for Arctic sea ice to be gone by the end of summer 2012. Somehow, the Arctic is still covered in ice. Alarms about the death of Arctic sea ice actually go back a long way. In 1954, the ice was predicted to be gone by 2004. In 1972, it was predicted to be gone by 2000. In 2007, it was predicted to be gone by 2013. In 2013, they said it would be gone by 2014 or 2015. In 2012, the final collapse of Arctic sea ice was predicted by 2016. 
according to Cambridge University polar expert Dr. Peter Wadhams. And then, in 2016, the deadline was extended again, this time to 2017. So don't tell me, let me guess, we're about to hear another prediction of the imminent disappearance of Arctic sea ice. The snows on Mount Kilimanjaro will be gone within 10 years. Al Gore made that prediction in 2007. The same Al Gore whose global warming movie gets shown to school kids all over the world. So it was headline news in 2019 when someone glanced upward and saw that, lo and behold, the snow on Kilimanjaro is still the snow on Kilimanjaro. The U.S. Secretary of State says there's only 10 years before climate change will be catastrophic and irreversible, and a threat to human security, global stability, and American national security. Make that former U.S. Secretary of State, because it was John Kerry, October 16th, 2009, meaning last year was the end of the world, which I just mentioned in case you missed it. The United Nations Environment Program predicts there will be 50 million climate refugees within two years. Yes, but that one dates back to May 2008. And that's when UNEP said there would be a worldwide climate-driven refugee crisis by 2010, which curiously was the start of the most prosperous decade the world has ever experienced, including dramatic reductions in absolute poverty among the world's poorest. Now, in case you're worried that the thrill of surviving through one Armageddon prediction after another is a thing of the past, don't worry. The Extinction Clock website keeps track of many upcoming doom and gloom headlines so you can enjoy the breeze as they too whoosh by. The Hoover Dam Reservoir will be a dry hole by the end of this year. The world will lose a fifth of all species by 2023. The human race faces extinction by 2026. And the Himalayan glaciers could be gone by 2035. Of course, we'll all have been extinct for nine years, so we won't notice the disappearing of the glaciers. But in case we're still alive, we're going to die. Because the New York Times says rising sea levels will all but erase many coastal cities around the world by 2050, leading to armed conflict and terrorism around the world. Or not. At the risk of spreading calm, I'm here to say, don't panic. For decades, the alarmist crystal ball has been cracked, spewing out sparks and smoke that are just apocalyptic fiction. We know none of these predictions are going to come true. As we said in our video on the climate catastrophe, the global warming of the past century didn't stand in the way of life getting remarkably better materially around the world. And even the experts of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change have said they expect the same will be true for the coming century. And the alarmists and celebrities who buy waterfront properties and live in coastal cities, they know it too. In fact, this constant bombardment of the public with nightmare forecasts would be funny if it wasn't also leading to some truly harmful consequences like rising eco-anxiety among children and youth, and a relentless push for draconian economic policies that will hurt poor people the worst. It's hard to be sure what to make of Stanford biologist Paul Ehrlich's August 10th, 1969 claim, soberly reported in the New York Times that, quote, we must realize that unless we are extremely lucky, everybody will disappear in a cloud of blue steam in 20 years, end quote. And of course, Ehrlich is the author of the granddaddy of all failed ecological doom predictions. 
Nope, not his October 6, 1970 claim that, quote, America will be subject to water rationing by 1974 and food rationing by 1980, end quote, by which point, instead, the obesity crisis was busting out everywhere. I mean, his original Earth Day claim, April 1st, 1970, in Mademoiselle magazine, whatever that was, that, quote, population will inevitably and completely outstrip whatever small increases in food supplies we make. The death rate will increase until at least 100 to 200 million people per year will be starving to death during the next 10 years, end quote. Fortunately, the merchants of doom have a long track record of being very wrong, from Paul Ehrlich's massive famines to nuclear winter. So, before you let them terrify you or your kids into supporting their radical policy agenda, ask them to account for their remarkably long and consistent record of failed past predictions. For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson.